Today we're going to be talking about drag and this is something that it's a fairly simple concept so this video is not going to be too long but I just want to touch on a few things that people seem to misunderstand when they look at drag particularly on road cars. Now there's two primary causes of drag. Um, we basically have pressure drag and viscous drag. So pressure drag is basically if you can imagine a plate flat and the flow is coming in this way we end up with our flow being deflected around it and it will end up with different flow accelerations at different points that cause the pressure to be high on here and it to be low on here. Now high pressure on this side, low pressure on that side, you end up with a net force that way. That is pressure drag and that's something you can see like if you imagine the front bonnet, the front bumper of your car, sorry, and you imagine your car's uh, wing mirrors, things like that are going to be experiencing pressure drag, same as off the rear of the car. Now the other type of drag is known as viscous drag. So basically if you imagine we've instead got a plate this way and we have our air blowing across there, we end up generating a boundary layer across the surface. So the velocity profile along here will be like that and you'll end up with the flow stationary at the surface and then gradually accelerating out to the free stream. Now this means that there's a shear in the flow, okay? So the flow is trying to basically apply a force and this shear is being felt at the wall because the wall is essentially holding the flow back to keep it stationary on the surface and all flows are stationary on a static surface. So the wall's holding it back, it's traveling at free stream up here, so there has to be some sort of force holding it back. Now this means that across this entire surface along here, we end up with a shear force on there. Now that's our viscous drag. So these are our two drag components. Now when we look at some basic car models, we can see here for something like an SUV, that along these top surfaces, because they are not um, perpendicular to the flow, because they're parallel to the flow, only viscous drag can act on them. So all these surfaces like that, the under tray there, only viscous drag can act on that because if you increase or decrease the pressure on it, it just provides an upwards or a downwards force. Um, but we get pressure drag on regions like there, regions like there, and of course there. So these are our sources of our different drag regions on a car. Now when we test our model in a wind tunnel or we test in CFD or something like that, we get a coefficient of drag, a CD. Um, now, the CD value, people often read a little bit too much into it. They say like, oh, this car's got a CD of 0.3 and this one's got a CD of 0.4, so therefore the 0.3 is more efficient. Not really true. The CD is back calculated from an equation for drag. Let me show you. So these are the basic equations we get. The top one is for calculating the drag force. Um, if we know our air density, our velocity, our area, and our coefficient of drag. And the bottom one is what we use to calculate the CD for a given car. So basically, let's say we test our car in the wind tunnel. We test it, say, 20 meters a second. We put that in as the velocity. We put, get a drag value of, say, 100 newtons. We put that in as our drag. Um, we get an air density of 1.2 kilograms per meters cubed. And then we put in our area, which we decide as the frontal area or any reference area you want on the front of the car. Um, and then we calculate all that, and that gives us our CD. Now the thing that you may have just noticed there is I was a bit confusing about the definition of area. And that's because we can actually define the area as whatever we want. If you look at a conventional plane wing or, or basically the standards for how aircraft wings are measured, they actually use the area from the top down, the planform area. Uh, cars though always use the frontal area. Something like a Formula One car, even though their frontal area may change with little area modifications, they'll keep it at a constant 1.47 meters squared. So what we really see is we don't want the A here, but we rather want CDA. And that's a much better measure of a car's aerodynamic performance. So when you're comparing cars, don't compare CD for efficiency, compare CDA. Because a small area car like this is going to naturally have a higher CD than a large area car for the same level of drag, which means that you aren't getting the full picture if you're just looking at the CDs. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out the other ones on my channel and subscribe for some more. Hopefully, I'll see you next time.